Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Let's talk about the organization uh, in the United States that manages uh, amateur radio communications along with a great deal of other stuff and that's the Federal Communications Commission. Okay, they're located in Washington. They were created by Act of Congress in 1934 so they've been around a long time but before that was the Federal Radio Commission so there's been regulation of uh, amateur radio since the days of the Titanic it's been around for ages things change with time the types of uh, licenses and so on all change with time um, the FCC uh, gets its authority from Congress okay from Congress they are an independent agency uh, the president appoints the five members of the Federal Communications Commission um, and they will have two Democrats two Republicans plus whatever party the president is um, a member of and that's actually a matter of law so uh, that's the way it works now by the way there is an international treaty governing radio communications and so on that again dates back to the Titanic when people discovered that uh, having radio stations on ships was truly a good idea now um, what maybe a lot of people don't understand is that FCC regulations have the force of law they are not something to joke with or or decide you don't like or whatever they have the force of law uh, the FCC also as an appointed uh, government commission is considered by law to be expert that means that it would take a great deal of uh, proof otherwise to persuade Congress or the courts that the FCC is wrong and this is true of all federal agencies uh, they are considered experts in their field now in the FCC regulations just part 97 of the FCC regulations which you can look up online uh, probably the best place to look it up is the ARRL website or just Google FCC part 97 and you can find part 97 uh, one of the interesting things that's right at the beginning of Part 97 is the so-called basis and purpose of amateur radio. These are uh, five reasons for having um, amateur radio in the United States. And, and pay attention to these because a lot of people think, well, the purpose for amateur radio is emergency communications. That is one of its purposes. In fact, it's the first one. Uh, the first one, recognition and enhancement of the value of the amateur service to the public as a voluntary non-commercial communication service, particularly with respect to providing emergency communications. So that is one of the reasons that the government allows ham radio. But let's go on. Continuation and extension of the amateur's proven ability to contribute to the advancement of the radio art. Um, a lot over the years a lot of the advancements in radio have come from hams and still does still does okay um, now in addition to that encouragement and improvement of the amateur service through rules which provide for advancing skills in both the communications and technical phases of the art and what that means is the idea that part of the reason that we are hams is to get better at doing it uh, because they want that as you'll see in D expansion of the existing reservoir within the amateur radio service 
of trained operators, technicians, and electronics experts. They're trying to improve the nation's skill with radio. And uh, during World War II, this was extremely important because uh, the uh, Navy and Army needed vast numbers of communicators trained in Morse code, and they had a ready basis for this in ham radio operators. And then the last one, continuation and extension of the amateur's unique ability to enhance international goodwill. In other words, yes, go work that DX. It does uh, bring countries together, and that's these purposes of radio have been that way for a very long time. Now let me talk about the classes of amateur radio licenses. They are amateur extra, okay, advanced, general, okay, tech plus, tech, and novice. Okay, now all these exist right now. Um, no new novice licenses are being issued. Okay, so this group here, which is a very tiny percentage of ham radio of people who continue to review their novice licenses, by the way, all. Um, license classes are good for 10 years and all are renewable. That did not used to be true for novice but it is now. No new novice licenses are being issued. No new Tech Plus licenses are being issued. Uh, tech Plus was past the Tech Plus the Morse code. Well as it turns out all the privileges for Tech Plus are available to the Tech so there's no real purpose for that license but it can be renewed. General, of course, is common. Advanced, no more advanced licenses. There's still, there's still a number of them. Um, I was advanced for over 20 years till I finally upgraded to extra. So the three license classes that we talk about are amateur extra, general, and technician. Okay, but these other guys are in there, and as you get on HF especially, you may talk to somebody who has one of these other classes of license. Well, one of the problems with advanced is that it used to be that the advanced test was the difficult one, and the amateur extra was largely oriented at volunteer examiners, because lots of amateur extras or VEs. Well, when they eliminated this from uh, the opportunities for new ones, they pushed all the hard stuff in here into amateur extra. And so now if you're in advanced, you in essence have to take that same test over again to get your extra. And so a lot of people who are in advanced just happily stay there. Uh, the difference in frequency privileges between amateur extra and advanced are not large. Um, okay, so those are the kinds of licenses that are available out there. Uh, the currently available ones are amateur extra, general, and uh, tech. This is what the license looks like. Technically, a license is composed of a station license and an operator license. So it'll tell you the operator privileges and it will tell you that there is a station license at that location and that is the call sign. The call sign goes with the station license. Well, it used to be that distinction was important. That distinction is not important at all anymore. It's a license, it's for a person at a location. However, you can operate your station at any location uh, that you want uh, in the United States and in conjunction and cooperation with the with, uh, uh, governments of foreign lands, you can operate there too under various reciprocal operating permits. Uh, like for example, you can just go into Canada and use it. Um, although you have to end or begin with a call uh, that indicates what country you're in. So, um, 
you can print this you don't have to uh, once you pass your first amateur radio exam uh, you're waiting for the FCC to give you a call sign as soon as you get that call sign and you know what it is you can operate you're legal now you can get a printed copy of this by going on to the FCC website and it uh, tells you where in the book here on page 7-8 uh, finding your call sign how to find it out go through here uh, and it tells you exactly the process you can get to and if you want to you can print a license put it up in the wall carry it in your wallet whatever now if the FCC wants to inspect your station they have a right to do so and you will need to show them your station records which will include your license if you've printed it if not you can print it for them um, and your logbook uh, anything else having to do with your station antennas cabling etc uh, it's federally licensed uh, station and the feds have the the right to to take a look at it now let's just look at a couple uh, details here uh, your license is good for 10 years okay from grant to expiration this is 10 years okay up to there and there and then after that there is a two-year grace period now what that means is if your license expires it's expired you cannot operate anymore okay during this two-year grace period you can renew all you have to do is file for renewal and then you get your same call letters back and you can start operating again if you go beyond the grace period you have to retake the tech portion the tech test okay and then whatever your license class was here before will be restored to you by the way this little feature is new was uh, quite recently added okay okay so um, there are some discussions in here of the requirements for a club license um, and of course uh, let's see the normal term is 10 years to your grace period if your license is stuck in the grace period no you may not uh, transmit just file for renewal and get it done get it over with okay now this section talks a little bit about volunteer examiners uh, the form 605 there aren't any questions in there about that in particular but you'll find out more about that when you go to uh, take your examination um, so that's really all that we have to talk about in this section so and it's very important to you I know because as soon as you pass your exam you're going to want your call sign and it tells you how to do that right in this section thanks for following along with the videos and the book after you have studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers Come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.